Good morning children. So once again a new lesson. The Great Stone Face Part 1. It's a very interesting story children. I'm sure you will like it. It's a very simple story. A very beautiful story you know. You will love reading it. Very simple. There's nothing difficult in this story. Okay. So let's begin children. Introduction first. One afternoon a mother with her little son Ernest was sitting at the door of their cottage. They were talking about the great stone face. It was clearly visible in the bright sunshine. Now what is great stone face? Let us see now. Thousands of people lived there. Everybody there was familiar with the great stone face. No, it had naturally happened, you know. It was a work of nature. Some huge rocks jointly looked like the features of a human face from a distance. So, when seen from a certain distance, it looked like a human face. As if it is the face of some human being. And it also looked alive. That means what? It looked exactly like a human being. Ernest's love for stone face. The giant face smiled on Ernest and looked kindly. He wished to hear its pleasant voice. But children, can the stone face speak? No, it is made of stone, rocks. It is not a real human being. He longed to see a man with such a face in order to love him dearly. So, what, what was his wish? Whose wish? Ernest's wish. Ernest, Ernest desired to see somebody in reality like the stone face. The mother reminded Ernest of the prophecy. It was that a child would be born there. Somebody had predicted, you know, that is prophecy. He would become the greatest and noblest person of his time. Now in manhood, his face would bear true likeness to the great stone face. The people had waited for such a person but in vain. In vain means useless. Nobody like the stone face arrived. The little boy hoped to live and see him. The mother strengthened his fancies, fancy. Fancy means imagination. Ernest was a helpful and happy child. He grew up to be a mild and quiet youth. He was very mild, very soft spoken. Now gather gold. One more character is there in the story children. Gather gold. A young man named Gadagold had left the valley many years before. He had become quite a rich man there. He decided to return to his native valley. There was a rumor that Gadagold looked like the great stone face. Gadagold had the face of an old man with yellow skin. The people considered him the image of the great stone face. Ernest gazed up to the valley. The stone face seemed to reject gather gold as its likeness. Now, the long wait. Ernest had grown to be a young man. Earlier he was a very small boy sitting with his mother. Now he's a young man. He's grown up now. Every day he would, he would go off by himself and gaze. Gaze means to stare, to look at something continuously. That is called gaze. So he would gaze upon the great stone face. He wondered why its likeness. Likeness means somebody who looked exactly like the stone face. He was eagerly waiting for somebody like that to come. Was delaying its appearance, was not coming. By this time, Gather Gold had become poor and died without establishing his likeness with the stone face. So now the story of Gather Gold is over. He's dead now. Blood and thunder. Let us see what is that blood and thunder. Another son of the valley had joined the army as a soldier many years before. He had become a general by then and came to be known as Blood and Thunder on the battlefield. Now in his old age he desired to return to his valley. The people considered him as the likeness of the great stone face. On his return he was welcomed warmly. So what did the people think that he is the one who looked like the great stone face. So the gathering mistook him as the greatest man of all time. Ernest failed to recognize any likeness. That means Ernest did not find any likeness. He felt blood and thunder does not resemble the great stone face. His heart assured him that the real copy had still to come. So somebody like him is still to come. So many years passed. This is part 2 children. Okay, Many years passed. Ernest was now a middle aged man. 
Age brought white hairs upon his head and wrinkles across his face. That means he's an old man now, but it also made him very. So age had made him wise. He became famous in the valley. Learned men from cities came to see him and talk with him. When Ernest had been growing old, a new poet who was previously the native of that valley arrived there. He had spoken high of the great stone face also in his poem. His songs also reached Ernest's ears. It appeared to him that his face had the likeness of the stone face. Now let us see. The poet too had heard of Ernest's wisdom and wished to meet him. That means they, would, they both wanted to meet each other, Ernest and the poet. One summer day he arrived at Ernest's door. Who arrived? The poet. He sought a night shelter. That means he took permission to stay with him for that night. Ernest readily agreed. The two talked together. The poet found his host very wise, gentle, kind and hospitable. Ernest was a very kind man, very wise, very gentle. Ernest looked into the poet's eyes and features. He compared the poet's face with that of the stone face. When the poet asked him why he was looking sad, he told that all through his life he had... <coughs> When the poet asked him why he was looking sad, he told that all through his life he had awaited the fulfillment of a prophecy. And when he read his poems, he became convinced that the poet was the real stone-faced man. So the poet, however, claimed that he did not bear the likeness of the stone face. It was true that he had high dreams in his mind, but sometimes he himself had no belief in those Dreams, because dreams are dreams after all, may not be true. The eyes of both were wet with tears. In the evening together, they went into a meeting place. When he spoke out his thoughts, <coughs> his words had power because they had depth. Depth means very meaningful. So they were true words of a life. A life of good deeds and selfless love. His face took on a grand expression. The poet cried out that Ernest was the real likeness of that stone face. So no, Gathergold was not the likeness. Yes, the poet was not the likeness. Who looked like the stone face? Ernest himself. And he's the one. He was the one who was waiting for somebody like stone face to appear. So he's the one. The people agreed with him. The prophecy was fulfilled. What was the prophecy? The desire that somebody like him should come. So Ernest is already there. But Ernest still kept hoping that some wiser and better man than himself would appear looking very much like the stone face. So he was still hopeful that somebody wiser than him would appear. Yes. So that's all children. Now my advice to you. Read, the, read both the parts. Okay, write down the summary. Okay, children, so this is your assignment. You have to go through the lesson, write down the summary in your notebook. And any difficult word you come across, note down in your, you can write in your notebook the word meanings. Okay, make a separate question. What word meanings? Difficult words, okay? And their meaning. So you can write that also. It will be easy for you to understand the lesson, children. Okay, that's all. Thank you.